You ever heard somebody use the phrase, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it? I can't help but feel like that pretty accurately describes the current state of Android apps on Windows 11. And that's something that it kind of pains me a little bit to say because I was always, anytime there were rumblings about Android apps coming to Windows in some way, the fact that I could, or the idea that I could use Android apps on my PC concurrently alongside my PC apps, that always was something that I was like, man, that sounds really, really cool. And now it's here and we can do this thing. And I've got a lot to say on this subject. So let's kind of break it all down here. So Android in general runs on ARM hardware. And it's a different kind of thing than what computers, PCs tend to run on, which is x86, right? So your phone, the reason phones can be really thin and they don't generate tons of heat such that they need a big cooling fan, they have longer battery life, this is because they're ARM, okay? I'm, I'm vastly oversimplifying things, but just roll with me on this, it's close enough. Mac, Apple, Recently, the whole thing with the M1 Max, it's because they are making their actual computers, their desktops, their laptops run ARM processors, and it's a really big deal because it's a major shift in the way things are done. My computer here that I edit on, that I game on, that I'm filming with is x86. Obviously, it's a Core i7, it's an Intel CPU, and because of this, it's got a great big giant heat sink and a big fan and a bunch of fans in there to keep it cool. There are many ways where ARM and x86 are just not the same, and software-wise, they have to be done in very, very different ways. So the reason I mention this is because Android runs on ARM. Typically, there is x86 Android. I get that, but let's not even worry about that because it's not really a thing. So generally speaking, Android runs on ARM. Windows runs on x86. So there's a major incompatibility, a major roadblock right off the start. So what Microsoft has done here is they've essentially used some tech from Intel to build an emulator to run Android apps. Just like when you want to play your SNES games on your computer or on some hacked handheld, you run an emulator. And the emulator basically uses software to replicate, to pretend to be more traditional hardware that that software is, understands how to use and is meant to run off of, right? So there's overhead with that though. Anytime you emulate something, the device doing the emulation, so let's say we have a computer and we're gonna emulate a Super Nintendo, an SNES, okay? So the computer that's emulating the SNES needs to be many, many, many times more powerful than the SNES was just to get the same level of performance because it's not being done in a native way, it is being emulated. So there is inherent overhead. So this is not perfect, right? These Android apps are not running natively. So you're going to lose some performance from that. So by virtue of that lower end PCs might not run super well. If you're running some older Core i3, apps aren't going to run that great. There's just, there's just not enough overhead there to be able to do this very well. Now, I have an i7 and a decent graphics card and tons of RAM, so theoretically everything should run just fine for me. And it tends to run okay, but I'll tell you this, Android apps run better on my Android phone, duh, than they do on my Windows computer, even though my Windows computer is a whole heck of a lot more powerful than my Android phone is. So that is kind of the lay of the land of what this is kind of, you know, like what's going on here. Now we also have to factor in that there are hardware differences that you just can't emulate. I'm running this on a desktop computer. That is not a touchscreen, it is mouse and keyboard and Android apps are meant to be run on touchscreens. Now you can do this sort of thing on a, on a Windows tablet, like a Surface Pro device, and that's gonna alleviate a lot of problems, but there are still more problems to deal with. So let's jump into now, how do you do this? How do you get this going? It's actually very, very simple. In fact, all you have to do is go to the Microsoft Store. I guess I should say pre prerequisite number one is have Windows 11. If you don't have Windows 11, this isn't gonna happen. But go into the Microsoft Store and search for Amazon App Store. You should see a pop up there. You can install this from there and then that's pretty much it. Just go through the installation process and you're pretty much good. From there, what you have by default is the Amazon App Store. Now on Android, the Amazon App Store has gotten very, very good. It actually can rival the Google Play Store, which is the store that you get your apps on on an Android device by default. On Android, there are a lot of apps in the Amazon App Store, but on the Windows version of the Amazon App Store, I wish I could say that was the case. I wish I could say that was true, but unfortunately, it's just not. Because when you open this thing and you start looking around at the apps that are in here, you're going to start to notice there are very, very few. And the apps that are in here seem to be largely 
like games targeting children so i don't really know why that's the case but i mean that's really all you have let's go to the editor's picks here and you'll see like this is hor this is really bad this is horrible it's really really bad there's almost nothing in here now luckily if you want to install one of these things it's really simple you click install it installs and from there everything works okay but the, the selection of apps in the store is ridiculous to me this wasn't even worth launching, if I'm being totally honest with you. Why even bother putting this out with, with an app store that is this devoid of apps? This is a waste of time. I, I get that like they're testing it and so forth, but like, good grief. This could have been tested internally. Like, this is just a joke. So people are gonna download this. It's in the store now. They're gonna download it and they're gonna look at this and they're gonna go, even though it says preview, I get it, but they're gonna look at it and they're gonna go, oh, this is a waste of time and they're gonna uninstall it and never go back to it again, right? I mean, this is a really bad first impression and first impressions really, really matter. So what's a boy to do now that you, you've you come across this store and there's nothing in it and you're just kind of like, oh, what a waste of time that is. Well, the good news is you can sideload apps relatively easy, actually. There's actually a program in the Microsoft Store itself, which let me open the Microsoft Store back up because I just closed it like a dummy. And I will show you exactly what you can do here because it's actually easy to make this quite a bit better than it is by default. So to go back to the Microsoft Store again, make sure that the search bar is visible here. And if you search for WSA tools and install this program, you're going to be able to do quite a bit of good here so let me uh, see if i can get this to format in this way when you first load it up it might tell you that you don't have um the developer tools installed you can actually let the app install it by the by itself it does this all kind of streamlined for you the next thing you need to do is you need to enable developer mode in your emulated version of android and the way that you're going to do that will be like this you're gonna click on your start menu. If you just type in Android, you'll see Windows subsystem for Android settings, which will then, I guess I can go back to this view for this. And you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna look for developer mode. You're gonna turn that on, go to manage developer settings, and you're gonna make sure that USB debugging is turned on, which is on this screen here. Scroll down a little bit, you'll see USB debugging. Make sure all that stuff is turned on. Developer mode is turned on. I've covered this a couple of times in a couple of other videos. I will link in the description another way to sideload apps that doesn't use this app, that uses a command line. So if in some way this doesn't work for you, reference that video. This is not gonna be a full tutorial in this video. And then at that point, you can click on install APK and you can go to APK mirror. You can pull you can pull APK, fi APK files off of your phone. These are like the EXE files. These are the things that install Android applications. And you can then sideload them, which is to say that you can then use this application to simply install an application. You see there's Pocket City, which is a game I'm gonna show you later. I would double click on this. It's gonna open it up. You can click install. I'm cutting some of this off here. It'll open it up like that. You can click install and the thing installs just fine. Now this is not something that is in the Amazon App Store, but you can simply download this program and, and do it that way. And it works really, really well. And then from there, it's actually pretty cool because the, the programs, the apps you've installed will appear in your start menu exactly like any other app. These are Android apps here that are sitting here and they're going to appear just like any other Windows app would appear like Instagram. Okay, that is not a, a, a Microsoft Store app. That is the Android version of the app. And from that perspective, they look well integrated and that looks pretty good. Now there is one giant problem which I've kind of skated around a few times here. No matter if you're side loading or if you are using the Amazon App Store, something you do not have access to are the Google Play services. And that is a really, really big deal because a metric ton of apps utilize the Play services. Now, I understand there are very complicated ways to sideload the Google Play services. One of those fairly popular methods turned out to have had some bad stuff in it. So I'm not gonna advise people to try this until it's been done many, 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 many times and there are really good safe ways to do it. So for now, I would say you're better off not trying. You're, you're, you're just from the stuff I've seen it might not be worth it anyways, but at any rate, you're not gonna have the Google Play services. So certain apps just are not going to run, okay? Like YouTube is gonna pop up and it's gonna give you an error and it's going to close. It's not going to work. A lot of apps are not going to work and that is a pretty big problem from there. 
I swear I'm going to start showing you apps here very, very soon, but there's one more thing that I do need to mention, one more small caveat. So in that same screen I showed you earlier, the settings for the Windows subsystem for Android, there is a... a, 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 a there is a set in here called subsystem resources. You can have it as needed or continuous. And what this means is, do you want this simulator running in the background all the time? Or do you want it to launch whenever you go to launch an application? Now, if you go with that route, the initial launch is going to be much slower. Now, once it's running, apps will launch quicker, okay? But continuous just has it there all the time. So you may be wondering, why not just leave it on continuous if you're going to use these apps? It makes things quicker. Well, because it is a task resource hog. Let's pull up task manager here, and we can probably take a look at this here. So here is Windows subsystem. It is using about 104 megabytes of RAM. Right now, it's not really using... Um, any CPU resources at all, which is kind of what you want to see. But let's go ahead now and let's fire up an app that I know does work. Let's go with Pocket City because I, like I said, I know that Pocket City actually does run. Let's rotate it in the app. And we should see a jump here. So we've jumped up in RAM usage. Not much because Android apps don't really use much RAM. CPU usage has stayed relatively low. So that's something you're just going to have to decide for yourself. Continuous or otherwise, that's going to be your call. So here we are in Pocket City. And this is a game that actually works okay on a touchscreen device. On a desktop with a mouse and keyboard, unfortunately, not very good. So let's continue my city. Actually, pull. I can I think I can pull my city over from my phone. Let's see if we can boost the resolution up to ultra. Let's really like go all out with this thing, okay? So you may be thinking at this point, hey, this looks good. It's running smooth. I can click. I can move things around. This all looks pretty good. The problem is this is a mouse and keyboard and you would hope that you could use your scroll wheel just to zoom in and out, but it does, it just does that, right? And, see, and what's weird is sometimes it zooms. It's really strange. You it, Sometimes it acts like a D-pad, sometimes it doesn't. Now what about like, oh, maybe you can double click. Double click doesn't, doesn't work. What if I click and drag? Sometimes that moves the map around and sometimes it will randomly start zooming me in and out. Right click seems to do nothing. Double click seems to do uh, nothing at all. It's just not playable like this. Now again, if I was on a touchscreen, like a Surface Pro device, I can pinch to zoom and everything works great. But on a desktop, games are gonna be tricky when they're touchscreen based games. Good news is it's running really, really well. The bad news is nothing's working though. I can't, I just can't play this game. And that's because it, look, it, it wasn't designed to be played like this. And that's kind of the moral of the story here. It wasn't designed to do this. Let's see if I can launch that YouTube app and I'll show you exactly what happens. YouTube won't run without Google Play services, which are not supported by your device. You click on okay. And after a moment or two, this will then just kind of close itself eventually by YouTube, it just doesn't work. What about PUBG Mobile? That might be a fun thing to try. I don't know how it would work without the touch controls, but again, here you go. Download failed because the resources could not be found. This is probably something similar. Doesn't work at all. Some apps that do work that I actually like, how about Overdrop? It's one of my favorite weather apps and it actually works pretty much perfectly. Now, unfortunately, I do have the pro mode version of this program and I don't see any way to properly restore my purchase. It does not seem to work, but at any rate, I mean, this this works relatively well. Um, problematically though, the radar does not, <laughs> does not work inside the app. So some apps will partially work and partially not work. I do like an app called Radar Omega though, which is another one that I can kind of illustrate here. It is a really good professional weather radar app. And Radar Omega is actually really interesting because you can pretty smoothly move around the map. You can change radar stations. You can jump between reflectivity and velocity and do all these sorts of things. But same thing, if you wanna zoom in or out, the scroll wheel down zooms out, scroll wheel up zooms out. So how are you meant to zoom in? Well, you can double click to zoom in. So that actually works. Strangely enough, if you double click and hold it and move the mouse up and down, you can also zoom in and out. So not, not the way that it was meant to function by any stretch, but you can kind of fake your way through it and you can use this relatively well on your computer and it's the same interface as on your phone and that's kind of the point of this right there aren't that many apps that work really well for me apps that i really like and that i tend to use most of them just don't work well on my computer but the ones that do work 
it works well because it's the same interface. There's one more that I would really like to kind of show you guys, and that is Snapseed, which is probably the best uh, Android photo editing app as far as I'm concerned. That would probably be Snapseed, and it seems to work um, pretty much exactly like you would hope it would work. But even in this, there are problems because when you go to open up a photo, it's looking for photos inside the Android subsystem. They're not looking on your computer. And if you're thinking, oh, I'll use Google Photos, no, you're not. That's not going to be a thing you're going to be able to do either. It, you're restricted. These things are walled off from one another. So there's not really a way to look at files on your computer that you're running this on to be able to edit them in this. So there's a really dumb workaround that I've come up with where I use something like CX File Explorer and then maybe grab the photo from like OneDrive or something. And then from there, you could like share it into Snapseed. <laughs> And then you got Snapseed running. Oh man, what a what a wonderful way to have to do this. But then like look, once you're in Snapseed and it's and it's running, I mean, you can do all of the stuff that you, you know, would like to be able to do. Everything works exactly as it should. So it's like this is again like a microcosm here of of what it's like trying to use Android apps on your PC. Like you see the potential but it just doesn't work well. There are so many roadblocks, stumbling blocks in your way to make this worse than it should be. And it's just super frustrating. And I don't really know how this gets any better, right? Because they're gonna have to get the Google Play services on board or they're gonna have to make their own like replacement version, but no one's gonna use that. So they're gonna have to get the Google Play services on board. And unless Google is like cool to do that, which I highly doubt that they are, it's just not gonna happen. So that's going to kill a whole heck of a lot of functionality because Android relies. Look, look at what Huawei's dealing with. That they, you know, they're kind of dealing with some of the thing because they can't use the Google Play services either, and their phones are, are are really struggling on the software front because of that lack of support from Google. Now that's because of all kinds of other crazy stuff, but Microsoft kind of finds themselves in a similar situation. And then on top of that, just the fact that apps like this, Android apps are not meant to use this. They're meant to use this and this thing and scrolling like that. Okay. So that's just not going to work well. So to me, I'm pretty wildly disappointed in this whole thing because it just does not work well. And I will tell you this though, I do actually use Android apps on my computer, but I don't use it through this. I use it through the Microsoft phone link app, almost called it your phone, it's not called your phone anymore, where you can use a very narrow selection of phones that are able to stream your Android apps from your phone over to your computer. And let's use one that uh, we were looking at a moment ago that did not work very well. Let's look at let's look at Radar Omega, right? Because I use it on both. Well, if I use it over here, it's gonna fire up. It's gonna stream from my phone over to here. And of course, it's gonna pick up right where I left off. And guess what? My scroll wheel works. How about that? The scroll wheel totally works. It actually runs better this way than it did through the emulator. So for me, there is a way to see how Android apps would actually interface well with your computer. The dream I talked about in the beginning, but it's not through this. It's through phone link. It's through your Surface Duo, your Samsung device, and soon to be Honor smartphones. And hopefully that ability gets spread out to more and more phones because I do think it is good. It's just not good the way Microsoft is doing it. Well, this is also Microsoft. Phone link is Microsoft. This is Microsoft. They're doing it two ways and one of them is good and only one of them is something everybody can do. So that's a problem because it's the bad one. Guys, that was a very long-winded video, but it's what I think about the Android app situation on Windows 11. This is my review of the current state of Android apps on Windows 11. Thanks for making it to the end of today's video. I'll see you on the next one, and until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.